Hello, everybody. Um, well, you know how I always tell you that at the beginning of the week, sometimes I don't really know what I'm going to be talking to y'all about. And I'm asking God to give me something through the week. And, you know, he always does. He always gives me some kind of scripture or something that I might want to share. Um, and you know about me so far, I'm sure that I, I love to share things. You know, I love to open up my heart and share things that are on my mind with you. Um, so I want to share something <clears throat> that happened, uh, something that God told me very clearly and I, on Monday morning. And I just want to build up to that and show, tell you some things that have been going on and then help you understand um, how he has helped me. And I'm sure that he has in mind to help all of you in some way. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> Well, here's what's been going on. Okay, so first of all, you, you, we all know that we lost Virgil last, it was July 29th, so two Wednesdays ago. Gosh, the time's gone by so fast. I feel like it was just yesterday. Um, and just losing a dear friend is a hard thing for us to all go through. It was hard for me, you know, just even though Yes, I'm so happy and glad and so thankful that God has him with him in heaven now and he's out of suffering and all the things that we do believe. And I know that it gives me peace, but it's still sad and I, uh, it's hard to say goodbye anyway, but it was a special time. But anyway, we lost someone, had a death at the Langford. And then, um, you all know that I lost my mother a year ago and it was in August. And so I guess it feels like August, at least maybe this first time, I don't know. I don't know, but August just seems like it's gonna be a hard month. <laughs> all the time, maybe, I don't know. But um, it's just that her birthday is this Monday, the 10th, which is also my husband's birthday. So obviously all through my marriage to Steve, many, many times, it was a big celebration, right? It was always with Steve and my mom and of course all the kids and just making a big deal. And it was so fun to celebrate. So facing this birthday without her is hard. And I know you all know how this feels. So just thank you for letting me share. Uh, and then on August 15th, is when my mom fell and she hit her head and had a massive brain bleed. And you all know, I think most of you know this story. So August 15th is just kind of very vivid in my mind still, but I do pretty good. I mean, I used to just not be able to make it through a day without sobbing through part of the day, but I'm doing much better now. I certainly miss her all the time, but the 15th is hard. And then the 21st of August is hard because that is the day that we took her off of life support after giving her every chance and hope and prayer and just thinking that maybe, maybe there's a way for her to be able to be okay. But the doctors told us no and that, that um, it was time to make a more long-term decision, either put her on long-term life support or take her off, which of course we knew she didn't want to be on long-term life support. So. Um, I guess I'm just, I'm not trying to go down this really sad, sad path with y'all, but I'm trying to tell you that August is hard and I'm, so that's the other thing that was after Virgil's death and then just walking into August, that's what it's been feeling like. Um, and then my husband over the weekend, last weekend, um, he comes home and tells me that one of his good friends that always for years, like almost 20 years has been coming to UM Army. And I think most of y'all know what UM Army is and something that he does and he loves to do. It's a mission outreach um, for people to help people and involve high school and college age kids to go out and serve in the community. And this lady who's in her early fifties has always joined him. She's always been the cook in the kitchen and just feeding all the kids and just have, they have a good relationship. Well, he, she got the COVID and she died. She wasn't able to make it. And so that happened last weekend. We heard that news and just, it was just, wow, it was shocking. And of course we're hearing a lot about people not making 
making it through the COVID virus. Many do make it, but then there's those that you think, well, why did she, they die? You know, you just can't understand it. So there was that death um, experience and just, just feeling a lot about that. And I don't know if I'm um, saying how y'all feel, but I w I've been telling Steve here lately, you know, we are doing everything as a couple at home and when I'm at work and out in the world, going to the grocery store, uh, picking up food or something, we are wearing our mask. We're using hand sanitizer. We're doing our safe distancing. We're doing everything that we can do, we feel, and trying to be as safe as possible. But I always have this thought in my mind, it always comes in that like, well, if, you know, Janice, if you do get it, it's probably about 50-50. You're either going to make it or you're not. <laughs> you know, like and I told my husband that and he said, no, Janice, you shouldn't think of it like that. So anyway, I've been talking to God. I have all this on my mind and just thinking about, gosh, death. And um, um, so Monday morning, this happens not every day. It does. It, I didn't, can't even tell you how often it does happen, but it has happened enough for me to know that God is in the habit, for me at least, when I wake up, sometimes there is a thought that just comes into my mind immediately when I'm awake and I'm conscious and oh, feel like I'm coming awake. Um, usually I'll wake up and immediately try to just say hello to God and start talking to Him. But this time, He said something to me. And it was without a doubt His voice. And you know, of course, I'm not hearing an audible voice. It's just a thought that just comes in. I'm not thinking about anything else. Uh, you know, it just comes immediately. And this is what he said. He said, don't think about your death. Think about Jesus. And just, that was it. And then don't think about their death. Think about their life. And I mean, it was just so impactful. And it was like, you know, God is so wonderful and loving and tender and compassionate and caring. And it was like, he just, you know, I knew that, of course, he knew how much I'd been struggling. And he just wanted to say something to me. And I just received it with joy and with, uh, with the love that he was pouring into my heart. So... I'm just sharing it with you in case it helps you because I'm imagining that, you know, maybe it's something that might be something you might be struggling with too. <laughs> um, of course, I, I pretty much knew I was going to cry in this one. <laughs> I thank y'all so much for just letting me be the emotional person that I am. And loving me the way you do. Oh, I love y'all so much. And I love my family. I ask you, if you, especially seeing this video, I ask you to think of my, my father, Bud Dealey, and just pray for him too. Because this is going to be a hard month for him. And I just appreciate your prayers. Um... But it was just so amazing to hear that. And of course we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. I say that all the time. You know, um, I love the scripture. Of course, I couldn't help but think of Romans, I mean, excuse me, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And he does say to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and to run the race that has been marked out for us and to set our eyes, fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. And uh, we just need to set our eyes on Jesus. I read the little, um, you know, life application part of that, and I just love it too. The Christian life involves hard work it requires us to give up whatever endangers our relationship with God, to run patiently, and to struggle against sin with the power of the Holy Spirit. To live effectively, 
we must keep our eyes on Jesus. I probably read this to you already, but I just want to read it again. To live effectively, I want to live effectively. I want every day to count. I want every day to be an effective day of life in, in, on this earth, in this body, living for God. Well, if I take, we will stumble, it says, if we look away from God, from Jesus, to stare at ourselves or at the circumstances surrounding us. We should be running for Christ, not ourselves, and we must always keep him in sight. So, you know, God just wanted me to be reminded of that. You're thinking of your death. You don't need to think of your death. Think of Jesus. Just always think of Jesus. He's your peace. He's your comforter. He loves you. Oh, receive his love into your heart. And don't focus on, and I know we all know this, I don't need to relive my mother's death and what it looked like. I just need to think of her life. Yes, her life down here when she, and as my mom, when I was get to be with her, I got to hug her and listen to what she had to say. Just be with her. But even more important than that is the life she's having now. And that's the life he was talking about. If I focus only on when she was down here, it makes me go back. It makes me go back and think of all that, of course, with fond memories, but also he just doesn't want me to think about her death. It's her life. Virgil's life. Nisha, the young lady that just died from COVID that we know. She's with God too. It's that life that we're focusing on. Okay, so that takes me to another thing that I want to say real quick before I close. On Monday, I showed a video. Um, not many of you were able to come. It's okay. You never have to feel bad about that. I think there's, you know, lots of things for y'all to do and um, may not work out with your timing. So that's okay. But I just want to include the link today in the email when I send you this video because it is so good by Louis Giglio and it's called Life is Hard, God is Good. And in it, I'm not going to tell you everything. I encourage you to watch it. It is about 40 minutes long, so carve out some time if you'd like to watch it. Um, but he he talks about Zooming and how we're, having, we're doing all this Zooming right now. Uh, people are doing Zoom meetings and doing a lot of that. But he talks about Paul's life and how Paul zoomed. And this is what he describes. He takes us back to that scripture that I already shared last week. And it was the one in 2 Timothy 4, 7, where Paul was talking about at the end of his life, he, he fought the good fight. He um, finished the race. That's what it was. He finished the race and he uh, kept the faith. Well, he did all of that while he was enduring hardship throughout his life. And so Louis Giglio does an excellent job of describing all of this, but how Paul was always able to zoom out, zoom and take a big picture, but zoom out and look and focus on the prize, you know, Jesus, seeing God in eternity, in, uh, in our eternal home. And that is what helped him live in the reality of God is good, even though life is hard. So let's do that kind of zooming. Let's get our minds on Jesus. Let's think about our eternal life and what we are going to have at the end of this life. Not to focus on our death, but to focus on that life and, in, and focus on Jesus because he is our life and he is living his life through you right now in this time that we have preparing us here on earth for our eternal life. So this was a wonderful re reminder for me, and I appreciate you tuning in to hear it too. I love you all so much. Thank you. I'm going to say a little prayer and close it out. Mm. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, for everything that you have done, the giving of your son, 
his sacrifice, his willingness to be sacrificed for us. So we can have this beautiful relationship that we have now that you are developing. And so we can be forgiven of our sins and have, because of that, be able to come close to you and then live with you forever and eternity. Eternity. Father, would you, um, with everyone tuning in today, and even the ones that don't and are not able to, would you help them every time they close their eyes, God, every time they bend their, not bend their head and close their eyes to pray to you, would you help them just see you in that secret place? There's that secret place inside of them in the deepest parts of their heart, where you are. And they, may, they can't see your face. We can't see your face yet, but we can acknowledge that you're there and we can see your presence. Just help us focus on that secret place, God. And receive your love and your peace, your comfort, your guidance, and your forgiveness of our sins as we confess those to you and acknowledge to you how much we need you. And God, in your powerful way, could you, as I pray for each one of them, would you just include all of their families too, all of their loved ones, everyone that they're concerned about, and joining them in that wonderful way that I just trust you are accomplishing in this prayer, that I'm just joining them in their prayers for their own families too. God, we just need you, we turn to you, and we love you back with every fiber of our being. Help us do that, God. Help us live each day for you, focused on Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay, bye.